some of you that are familiar with PCs, that the century knows of the 2006 PCs, uh, you're more familiar with the design on, on your left. You see it's pretty much a three-chip solution. So you've got the processor, you've got the main chip, and then you've got your I.O. chip, right? This is kind of how it works. So this is kind of the fundamentals of why technology went from what it used to be to where it is today. If you look at the left side, you'll see where we've uh, leaped. We've leaped into a two-chip design. Now, why do you think that's better? It's better because it, it allows manufacturers uh, to reduce the bill of materials. It allows them to do more with less as far as reach different market segments. So from a two-chip three -chip design to a two-chip design, form factors become smaller. You allow them to do more with less without sacrificing the things. And some of the key components is that you move the memory controller, the part that handles the memory, into the CPU. And then you also take the PCI graphics and put that into the CPU as well. And this does, this increases your efficiency and provide, allows you to do more performance as far as PCI graphics as well as memory performance. What does turbo mode mean? It's not exactly a turbo button on the side of your PC that allows you to go faster. But in essence, it's, it's uh, a BIOS controlled, software controlled method to improve performance or give you power when you need it. So if you look at the left, you've got your quad core system, four cores, and if you look at the right, you've got a system that has turbo. And the turbo works differently. So you have four cores, and each core can be enhanced with turbo at each bin equaling 133 megahertz. So for example, if you have a 2.26 gigahertz CPU, and you enable turbo mode, each, each one of these uh, yellow boxes up there, or a bin, is equal to 133 megahertz. So if you have all four cores on, on the i7-920, you can add two bins per core. Now the way turbo mode works is that it allows you to turn off cores when you don't need it. So for example, if your workload is not as busy as it would be on a morning, where you're just checking mail and maybe reading the news. So you don't need all four cores active. Makes sense. So what, what your computer would do is turn off some of the cores, either two cores or three cores, and put them at a nearer, near zero state power. This does two things for you. It improves your power efficiency, and it gives you more performance on the core that is active. And the more cores that are turned off, the more burns that are allowed on the available cores. So simply put, on the left, a PC without turbo, on the right, a PC with turbo. Turbo allows you to do things efficiently and something that you never have to touch or worry about. You can have all four cores on with two bins each per core, and each bin is 133 megahertz. So if, you, if you're out shopping or looking at, at some of these CPUs or computers, and you decide to go for a 2 gigahertz versus a 2.2, there's a substantial price difference for some of you that have been out in the market. So this allows consumers to, to start off at the bottom, but doesn't limit them to the bottom. So when there are content creators or there are gamers out there, so each of us do a little bit of everything, but we're not very specific in one key area. We type documents, we browse the internet, correct? Once in a while we might like to play a game. And sometimes we get uh, photos from our children or grandchildren that we'd like to view or edit, or maybe send off or put in an album, some of a digital album. So in order to do that, the two gigahertz PC consumer, it allows them to get that performance when they need it. In Windows 7 and uh, Windows Vista 32 and 64 bit, uh, you'll see that there's a widget available that allows you to view the performance of your, of your cores as well as to see the turbo. And you can see it in real time. Hyperthreading, another, another feature that speaks about performance and power efficiency. Some of you have seen hyperthreading from the Pentium 4 days. Hyperthreading, the little HT on the top of the, of the icon or the logo. So this is similar to that, simultaneous multi-threading or hyper-threading. So the current uh, CPUs come out with quad-core, so they can handle four tasks. But the ones that are launching today are quad-core multi-threaded. So what does that mean? It means you can do more with this. So you have a quad-core and you can do eight threads or eight tasks simultaneously. What does this mean for you and your end users? the end users out there is that they see the hourglass this and that's always good a little bit about the cache 
So previously we used to have six megs cache and various lower sizes of cache. The cache is now up to eight megs. And more importantly, it's a shared cache. And the way it works is that as you, as a, each core writes an instruction and does a task, it caches part of that task or saves pieces of that information. So if another core needs to access that information, it's on the same, it's on the same shared buffer. So it doesn't have to ask the other core what was written. It's just a smarter way to read and write data. Let's talk about the uh, transformation. Okay, it's time for change. I mentioned today everybody does a little bit of everything. I type a few documents, I use a few Excel spreadsheets, once in a while I like to edit photos, and maybe when I'm supposed to be doing work I'm playing solitaire, so a little bit of gaming, not too much. So what you'll see in the processors today, the i7s, the mobile processors, people are getting more mobile, and it's a processor that's designed for every, with every user in mind. And more importantly, it's systems and chipsets designed for flexibility. So when I speak about processor designed for every use, if you look at the current illustration, somebody that just does Facebook, Twitter, something of that sort like Vince mentioned, it's capable of doing that. With turbo mode, it'll turn the cores down and only give you what you need. For example, somebody that's doing some audio content or audio streaming needs a little bit of more power. You step up the cores, it gives you more power when you need it. What about those gamers? It gives you extreme performance when you need it as well, where it can turn on all the cores and give you simultaneous multi-threading. So, speaking again about one, one flexible model, it says here, don't be content with content. You have the people that want to do video rendering, graphics rendering, picture editing, typing documents, whether you somebody that's just doing video editing or whether you're into some minor extreme gaming. Now keep in mind with each of the processes that are launched, there's different segments, correct? There's the extreme segment, there's the mainstream segment, and there's the entry level. And various features are available with each segment. But key point is that there's flexibility. 